excited about this interview, and hopefully it'll be the first of many. We were just talking to him during the break as he was connecting with us being video Skype, and um, I'm excited to hear that uh, Richard Belzer is a listener of the show. Uh, and I count him uh, amongst um, a lot of the great folks that uh, put up with me. Now, he's written a very powerful book. I've only started reading it. I haven't read much of it because I just got it a week or so ago, and I've been very busy. But I look forward to reading the whole thing. It's been put out by Skyhorse Publishing, the same folks that put out Jesse Ventura's excellent books. And by the way, the afterword is written by Jesse Ventura. Dead wrong, straight facts on the country's most controversial cover-ups. Oh, where the government was shoot and kill and poison people. And blame patsies. Oh, what Dave Mustaine is in so much trouble for. We have that in the last 10 minutes today, that exclusive interview I did during the first hour today. We taped it. it it's it's going to go out in about 40 minutes from now. Uh, but we are very honored to have Richard Belzer here on the broadcast with us to run through the book today. Good to have you, buddy. What, a, what an iconic, uh, iconic individual you are. I'm very flattered to have you with us. Alex, I uh, thank. I'm so happy to be on your show. As my family can tell you, I'm a, a longtime listener, and your research has thrilled and astounded me for years. I mean, you really, you really, you're the real deal. And I love that you, the Infowars hook that you have, that because it is information. And I like that you're not encouraging people to take up arms, although we all have the right to bear arms. You're you're doing great work, Alex. I know you work hard and you're tired and you try to spend time with your family, but you're on a mission, and I understand it. Believe me, I've run into some of the same things that you have run into over the years in terms of censorship and, you know, mysterious things happening. But we're brothers now, Alex, so thank you for having me. Wow, I am blown away because obviously I've enjoyed so many of your films, the big TV shows that you're doing, including the current one. And the website is ibelz.com. Is that the best website? Ibels, but you know, Alex, if I may... Uh, Belzersbook.com because I'm, I'm, you know, I want people to really, I feel a civic responsibility. I mean, you know Jesse very well, and you know that, uh, well, both of you guys, I mean, I think we're on the same team here. We're disappointed. You know, people say, I hate America. I, I don't hate America. I'm disappointed in the system. And I want, the reason I wrote this book, you know, I've written novels, Alex, and I've written nonfiction books, but they're put in like the, you know, entertainment section or the comedy section. I purposely did this book as a history book. I, I used to be a newspaper reporter. David Wayne is a scholar. He's a microanalyst of media events. He has studied for decades how the media, and this is right up your alley, Alex, how the media covers events. And I've covered, and his footnote here, this is, what's, this is another reason I admire you. You back it up. I mean, you're, you back up what you say. You have cited things that I thought I only knew or, you know, like a Freedom of Information Act or a speech someone gave or an old magazine article. Or I mean, you, thank you for <laughs> uh, kind of fortifying uh, my research. And, there, I mean, you blow my mind almost every day, man. I mean, and, and it's, it's just great to be on the show with you. Oh, Richard, I, please, please tell us about your awakening. I mean, I'm sure it's been going on for decades. Well, and, 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 and why you decided to write this book, obviously, right. uh, for our listeners, you don't really need any introduction. But, uh, I mean, this side of you, though, I mean, uh, uh, um, so people understand. Yeah, sure. Well, I, uh, you know, when they exploded John Kennedy's head uh, in broad daylight, uh, I was in college. And it just, that kind of woke me up a little bit. Uh, you know, I followed that very closely, and then I kind of went dormant. And then when Watergate happened, Alex, the same names popped up that were in the Bay of Pigs, that were involved in the Kennedy murder. You know, the permanent national security state reared its ugly head. And that was around the time I became friendly with Gore Vidal, who is, rest in peace, who is one of the foremost scholars on what happened to this country when Harry Truman in December of 1947 signed the National Security Act and turned us into this paranoid armed state, spending trillions of dollars on borrowed money against an empire in decline, Russia. But the reason I wrote this per current book, Alex, is because a lot of people roll their eyes at me sometimes. I'm sure you've seen that. It happens to you when you say the government kills people or the government lies or that there's psi wars or that CNN actually had guys coming over from 
Fort Detrick telling them how to do the news. And I mean, you're, you're into all this stuff. The reason I wrote this book with David Wayne is because as an FBI agent who we interviewed said, I have no theories, just facts. And as you know, Alex, better than anyone, we don't have to make anything up. The world is scary and fascinating and wonderful in its own right. It's very complex. Most people in their day-to-day -day life can't read 20 newspapers. Or, you know, they don't have staff. And I mean, you're, you're performing a civic duty. And uh, because I'm an actor, I have a lot of downtime. I've been taking notes for years. And then Skyhorse called me about David Wayne wanting to work with me. And it was, you know, this, and I'm, this is not hyperbole, Alex. This book is, if, uh, at the risk of being immodest, I'm more proud of this. And I mean, I, I'm an actor, I'm a comedian, and, and I'm certainly proud of that. But this book means more to me than I think anything right now during this moment in history of the zeitgeist. And because I'm famous, I can put this book out and people will read it that wouldn't read it if my name wasn't on it. So, you know, it's I'm, I'm using my celebrity to to make the electorate informed so they can know how you know, I mean, they know. But I mean, to get the spineless Congress who has a 10 percent approval rating, you know, the, it's Jefferson's idea was that the people the the pyramid has been inverted. Jefferson's idea is that you rule from the from the bottom up but somehow the elites have switched it and the the people's voice is gone you know as you know alex in the early days senators it was a gentlemanly thing you know they go back to their homes and they'd come and, i mean it was even though they were slave owners and uh you know they had some you know jefferson was a genius and um thank god jefferson came back from uh france when they were writing the constitution because he was inspired by the French Revolution, and when he came back, he said, there's no Bill of Rights. What about people's property? What about the right to bear arms? What about, so, you know, Jefferson saved this country in a way, uh, because Madison and Hamilton thought that people, you know, have to be controlled, and they were very patronizing. And Jefferson, uh, he was an elitist, but he understood, uh, you know, I mean, Jeffersonian democracy is a real brilliant, as you know, concept. He believed in the beautiful power of the yeoman farmer and their families, the people in the dirt, people that really worked for a living. He believed in the general knowledge of the crowd and really disdained the corrupt uh, type of European arrogant disconnected elites. And he said the Western elites should learn from the people at the grassroots. Exactly right. He was a farmer. He was a transcendentalist. He rewrote the Bible and took out all the miracles because it is, you know, it's a great, inspiring work. I mean, he was a fascinating guy. And it's ironic that, you know, in the Constitution, it says all men are created equal, except, you know, Indians are savages and blacks are two thirds of a person and women can't own property or vote. But ironically, Alex, his term, uh, freedom, and uh, has been used by blacks, women, and gays you know, all men are created equal. That came back kind of not to haunt Jefferson, but that term has been used by all these groups, and rightfully so. If I just may say one more quick thing before I get into my book. When Jefferson said, when they wrote The Pursuit of Happiness, that was not a light uh, concept. And the government and the commons, and, you know, we're supposed to share responsibility and share the lands, and I mean, we can develop the land, but certainly there has to be land that everyone can share in like public parks and stuff. But uh, the whole concept of Jeffersonian democracy is that it's not the Hobbesian thing of every man for himself. And he had a fight for that. So um, anyway, my book um, is straight facts. And I must say that I thought I knew a lot about these subjects, but David Wayne really took me to school. And I was so flattered that Jesse wrote the afterward because I'm a big fan of his books and his writing. The thing that's scary about this book, Alex, is I've done a few interviews already um, and no one can punch holes in it. And that's why I wrote it, because I'm a comedian. I'm an actor. They can try to marginalize me and call me, you know, the, the Jew liberal from New York or you know, whatever they want to call me. I don't care. My role is to use my celebrity to tell people that not only does the government have its eyes on you, they're looking at you through a telescopic sight. And, you know, you're very much into 
the technology, like this computer we're on now, even when it's off, they know where we are. You know, phones. I'm at my friend, uh, I'm with my friend Chris Walken. We're doing a cooking thing for Funny or Die. And Chris's house, he doesn't have a computer or a cell phone. So dig it, Alex. He's not on any of Google's maps. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Wow. Well, you know, I've tried to do that now. At uh, We can't. You and I can't. We're finished. I mean, we're. We're public now. Well, that's amazing. Uh, I want to get into the book some because this... Just, I'm sorry, I'm ranting. No, 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 no. Are you kidding? I want to have you back next week for two hours if you got the time, sir. We're we're just flattered to have you here. And I mean, all the points you're bringing up just bring up so many others that I'd like to interject. Yeah, but I'm the king of interrupting, so I'm kind of just sitting all. here and shutting up. No, no, you it. don't want to invite me to interrupt, Richard. If you do that, it's all over. Uh, but uh, continuing here, we're about to go to break. When we come back, I want to look some at the book because this was a coup yeah. d'etat against people and thinkers and ideas that were threatening the power structure. I mean, they assassinated a bunch of people, did it in broad daylight, and tried to cover it up, but they left their tracks. So yeah. looking at this, looking at your book, is a roadmap to understand our present and our future. So I want to get into the book that I can't wait to read. I got it a few weeks, a week and a half ago, been trying to read it. Uh, because, you know, you think you know all this stuff, folks. I started reading it. It reminded me of stuff I'd forgotten, but a lot of stuff I didn't know, and I was looking it up. Uh, it's Richard uh, Belzer's new book, Dead Wrong, Straight Facts on the Country's Most Controversial Cover-Ups, available in bookstores everywhere and at InfoWarsShop.com and also at his websites. We'll give you when we come back. Stay with us. Alex Jones here with a message that could revolutionize health in this country. Going back about a year and a half ago, I began to learn from friends like Ted Anderson about the incredible health effects of Longevity products. And I started promoting him some because I'd seen his weight loss, his health, all the things that had happened for him. Now, I've only stuck my toe in the water and lost a little over 40 pounds, and I'm still big. Aaron Dykes, who you know has been working here for six years at InfoWars.com, lost 92 pounds. We're going to show you some before and afters. He began to hear the guest on my show a year and a half ago. He began to do his own research, and he implemented the information that Longevity and InfoWarsTeam.com is promoting and had dramatic results. And that's why I'm telling our listeners and viewers, you need to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and try just the essential fatty acids, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and the Pollen Burst Plus. And I believe you'll be blown away by the dramatic results that I've had and Aaron's had. Aaron, break down what happened, your story. I've been overweight in my life for far too long. Years ago, I lost a lot of weight, more than 50 pounds, but it came right back. I wasn't able to keep it off. More recently, I've worked really hard with diet and exercise to try to lose weight, but I just didn't get the results. It just didn't happen, and I wasn't able to stay motivated long enough to reach my goals. Then I saw what you were doing with InfoWarsTeam.com and the great products, Tangy Tangerine, kind of the base one to start with. I wasn't even trying to lose weight, but I got it because I wanted to feel better energy I wanted that nutrition, didn't even understand how that could kickstart my own weight loss goals, but the products did that for me. I found myself suddenly losing weight, more energetic, wanting to exercise, wanting to eat the right foods. And they don't even advertise it as weight loss. They don't, but it became- But, but, but Pharmacist Ben Fuchs explains that's what happens if you're overweight because you're no longer hungry because you're getting what you need. When you start taking their proprietary formulation of essential fatty acids, it blows the competition away. When you start taking Beyond Tangy Tangerine and Pollen Burst Plus and the other key longevity products, it is incredible. It was so easy to lose weight and regain health for myself, barely without trying, just from taking the products. I want to challenge our radio listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com so you can see for yourselves the incredible results Aaron and others have achieved with longevity products that are discounted at wholesale prices at InfoWarsTeam.com. Sign up as a distributor and get wholesale pricing discounts at InfoWarsTeam.com. The revolution against tyranny starts individually with our bodies. There is a global awakening happening. The sleeping giant that is humanity is awakening, and a big part of that fight starts at InfoWarsTeam.com.
Well, I feel like I should say more cowbell here uh, right now. We have Richard on the line with us. He's the author of Dead Wrong, Richard Belzer, you know, TV, movie star, you name it, uh, author, comedian. And then he said, yeah, no, I'm here at Christopher Walken's house. And he was talking about how he didn't have a bunch of computers and phones spying on him. And suddenly, Christopher Walken is on our Skype video feed. Let's bring him up right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now my. I had to drag him out of bed. That's how much he likes me. Richard and I are cooking. Yes. And we're writing a book. Right. And we're doing a movie called The Nose and the, the, Nose the River. We're teasing, but we were, we're filming this uh, cooking thing for Funny or Die. So Chris took a picture of my nose and I took a picture of his nose. And we're going to release that as a short film and hopefully get, I an, actually took get a, an Oscar. <laughs> you took a snapshot of my nose, but I took a movie. A movie, of yeah. A four second movie of my nose. It's going to be great. People want to know what celebrities do, Alex. <laughs> we're not that mysterious. But we also made, we made a chicken. Well, yeah, we made chicken. We made what else? sweet potatoes. He, uh, he made chicken with sweet potatoes, pears, and onion, cooked pears, cooked pears, and a, a, the orange oh, seafood yeah. melange. He's a great cook, and I I just made the salad. The orange melange. Brijol. The orange melange. What's the name of that dish you made? The, the French name. The seafood. No, no, the orange melange. The scallop orange, the orange melange. melange. <laughs> <laughs> a la Walken. Yes. Alex, you ever come to New York? Uh, I, I do come occasionally. Uh, why? Please call us when you come to town. But Richard made a, 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 ter a, a terrific arugula salad with brajol. Brajola, yeah. uh, heirloom tomatoes, shaved parmesan, shaved parmesan, two kinds of oil, sunflower and uh, olive oil and a little salt. And we had a little red wine. A little red wine. That sounds good. Yeah, Chris is a gourmet. What's your favorite type of red wine, Mr. Walken? French. <laughs> I hear you. <ya. laughs> we like to have the heavy reds. Oh, wow. Uh, Mr. Walken, um, we are learning um, Mr. Belzer's views on the world. Richard and Chris. Richard and Chris. Uh, uh, Chris, what is, what is your view on what's happening in the world right now with the, with the TSA uh, and the groping and the uh, surveillance grid. Um, I was uh, hearing that you don't have all the little spy gadgets in your house. I envy that. I, I have no idea, and I hardly leave the house. Chris does not. I cook, read the news. Richard just it. gave me his book. I'm going to read it. Yeah, he'll read my book, thank God. It's right here. It's a history book. But Chris is... Uh, but I'm working with Richard on, on the cooking book. To me, that's... Right, we're going to do something together. But... Chris is brilliant because he doesn't want to be on the Google map and he doesn't want his phone to be have that reverse technology that we all know even when it's off, they know where we are. And he's one of the few people I know in the, on the earth that has managed to do that. I mean, we have to do it. We're in media, but, you know, he can go to a movie set. They give him a phone that he can throw away when it's over, when he does a play. It's the coolest. I mean, uh, they only give me the phone so that they can know where, know where he is. But he Showing does. away my radio slash TV show. Yeah, we're almost invading you right now like an alien probe. I know. I was taking a nap and Richard called me out and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. But, but uh, Mr. Walken, uh, what do you think of the whole announcement of, of that they want to have an Iran war? Do you think that's a bad he idea? I anything about that. Who? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a nap, Alex. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Walken. All right. All right. Thanks. All right, all right. I, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Richard, that I, br I, uh, uh, that I brought up uh, serious subjects. No, no. <laughs> no Call him back. Let's ask him his favorite recipe with truffles. Ask him that. Uh, what's your favorite recipe? Well, he made a great chicken. Who? Tell him how you made it. <laughs> what's your favorite uh, truffles recipe, Chris? Truffles. Um, I, like, I like truffles on pasta. There you go. <laughs> me too, me too. Uh, with some shallots. and uh, You like shallots on the pasta, sir? Absolutely. Olive oil, garlic, and then and then a nice uh, nice French red. Yes, of course. What, what's what's your favorite French red? He's go, he's gone. Oh, he's gone. Okay. Yeah, I can tell. He wanted to talk about food. He didn't want to talk about the New World Order. No, he's he's a food holic, and I'm I'm the one that you know is into all this stuff. And like every you know, like during the Reagan administration, I try to explain to him certain things about you know uh, uh, trickle down economics and how they were raping. Uh, the government, you know, that the, the, and he would say, isn't it always been like that? <laughs> and so, you know, what am I going to say? 
<laughs> well, hey, tell us about this food show. When is that coming out? Oh, that's just the bit we're doing for Funny or Die, where he and I go shopping uh, in his favorite market here in Connecticut, and then we go to his house and we cook and then we eat it. But we're talking about film and our lives and, you know, feeding my dog. My son-in-law is playing the banjo. Come here, Timbo. Um, my son is a great musician who I'll send you his album. He's a country western, but he's like... Hey, well, hold on. Uh, Richard Belzer's our guest. He's got a new book out. That was a short segment. Long 18-minute segment coming up right oh, now. Okay. Hopefully the first of many visits. I mean, I didn't know that we would have uh, more cowbell. And I've been wearing this watch, you know, wear for quite a while joining us. I'm blown away right now. Uh, dead wrong. Get the book everywhere. This is dedicated to the fellow that just popped in with Richard Belzer. Right now, I'm just reeling in a good way from Christopher Walken suddenly popping into my Skype video. <laughs> I think we've now reached the weirdest moment in InfoWars history. Amazing. Richard Belzer uh, with David uh, Wayne, afterward by Jesse Ventura, dead wrong. Did you say there's another website, belzerbook.com? Is that right? Belzersbook.com. Belzersbook. Dot com belzersbook.com or ibells which is my website absolutely and uh, we sell it at infowarshop.com i really appreciate that alex oh you got to be kidding man I, I mean we're all in this together and i want this book to be number one it is listen i want to get into the book here but but as we went to break you were dragging in your, coming, your, your uh, mandolin now for the show but i'll get him in before i leave okay good but uh, let's position. let's get and by the way, you've yeah. promised to come back on for a full hour next week because we're cutting you ten minutes short because of this uh, giant I, imploding, uh, you know, story with uh, with uh, what's happening with uh, the Second Amendment and all the rest of it. And yeah. uh, Dave Mustaine, but I want to talk to you about that stuff. I think we can we're on the same team. Well, yeah. Well, let's talk about that and then the book because your book is let's about. Let's talk about the book right now. Yeah, let's do it. But next week, you got me for an hour. Any week, any time. Well, let's talk about the book right now. Tell yeah. us about it. Well, uh, as I said before, I, you know. Be I'm cashing in on my celebrity uh, for unselfish reasons, I hope. Uh, I used to be a newspaper reporter. I've taught school. I've had all kinds of jobs. And, and I, you know, my father, when I was born, we were in the ghetto, what you call a government project. We literally were on the wrong side of the tracks. The train went by our building. And then my dad borrowed money from my mom's father and started a little business. And then we moved to a three-family house. Then we bought a ranch house. So it's like I, I've lived the American dream without kind of being able to articulate it. And now that I'm older, uh, I really love this country. I really, you know, I'm, I know a lot of people in Washington. I know a lot of, I can't drop names, but believe me, Alex, I know some really heavy people, some people who are a part of the dark force. And it's, I just feel that you and me and a Jesse and this is like, you know, we're the Paul Revere's of the Internet. I mean, we have to alarm, alert people. I know they're busy and they're obsessed with maybe getting thrown out of their house and the, the banksters, as you call them, which I love. Um, did you ever see the documentary Cywar, Alex? Well, expand on that briefly. There's a documentary by uh, an English documentary that is one of the most amazing things. And it's, it's like, I think it's only a year or two old. You just go on, uh, you know, YouTube and put in Psy War, one word, full movie. And sure. Well, I know what psychological warfare is. I think I've heard of that movie. Tell me about it. This movie it talks about the invention of public relations in 1914 when the Rockefellers. Oh, yeah. Edward Bernays. Yeah, yeah. Well, they talk about him, and they talk about how he uh, uh, and his minions figured out that propaganda can be used to sell products. And Bernays was Freud's nephew, so he used psychological insight to manipulate humanity because he, like a lot of elites, looked down upon us. They looked down upon the people. They think that we're, you know, we need to be controlled. Uh, and it's disgusting, but uh, mark that, have your people mark that down. That's a must for you, man. I'm telling you, you're going to go crazy. The footage is astounding. There's a guy at the BBC who they gave permission to go into their archives and do anything he wanted. But it, Oh, yeah. And he found the a most amazing footage. Anyway, um, it's it, the reason I'm going on about it is because it's right up our alley, and at this timing now, the zeitgeist, I think, you know, I agree with you that or finally, you know, I, I, I say that George Orwell was kind of wrong because 1984 goes both ways. They can see us, but we can see them now. 
And the government's really worried about, as you know, they're trying to screw around with the Internet. So my book, I, the, the style that it's written in is very, I'm very cognizant that people have no time. So it's very punchy. It's very, it's like a murder mystery, but you can't put it down. I have all the uh, greatest footnotes, thanks to my partner, and uh, timelines, FBI agents, uh, forensic evidence, scholars, scientists. It's irrefutable. It is irrefutable. The police report with the RFK deal. I mean, this is why I've tried to shut up here. Oh, it is, is, is they held his arm down. He didn't shoot him. They knew it was a different caliber. We know who shot him, and it's the same in every case. They're so ham-fisted because they controlled the media then. They yeah. could do anything they wanted. So exactly. listen, listen, this weekend, this weekend, I've got Saturday and part of Sunday off. I'm not just saying this to hype it up. There's right. going to be something I'm sitting down with while my kids sit there and play board games games yes. and it's going to be dead wrong because again as i said i started reading just the first chapter it is very well written and incredibly researched everybody has got to read dead wrong thank you alex it's going to blow your mind and i, and I don't use that term lightly the, um the reaction to the book has fortunately been quite amazing and uh i think we're you know with your help we can build on this momentum and get and uh david wayne and i are writing another book called hit list about all the people that died after kennedy's murder uh you know so we're gonna we're gonna keep doing books uh but the, the style of this book is it's incredible i'm not you know i have to sell it but it really is very readable and you know i've read it a lot obviously but the the, the way it's laid out as you know alex we just show you know the official verdict the actual circumstances then inconsistencies and then we break it down and um it was really uncanny because uh, David Wayne and I, um, we have a similar writing style. So it was like the gods are smiled on us or something when, when we talk on the phone or he emails me, his sense of humor, his writing style. No, you he guys clicked. I mean, people that are into truth and liberty and freedom, it just clicks. Yeah, that's exactly right. And he was quoting one of my uh, quotes from a book before he ever met me that he was signing off all his letters with my quote, which was, 90% of the people in the United States believe that John Kennedy was killed by a conspiracy. The other 10% work for the government or the media. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, <laughs> it's no joke, but you know. No, 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 but you're absolutely right. I I've done an index of polls. Over 90%, over 90, usually about 91, 92, in scientific polls don't believe it. And then the right. tiny media elite in government, 8% you know, points at us yes. from their Byzantine Hill yeah, and. We're and tell us we're freaks because we live in reality. Yeah, well, you know what, Alex? I am sick of that. And I told some, uh, I did a bunch of radio interviews today, you know, local stuff. And I, I have no tolerance now for uh, marginalizing this information. And that's why I feel the book is so bulletproof, because no one can refute anything in the book. And I, I'm so proud of that. And it took us a long time. But that's why I'm going around ranting like I am and, and because it's, you know, your, your term Infowars, I mean, it's, it's so uh, important. And the book, you know, Marilyn Monroe, for instance, you know, there's, I think we have 59 pages on her. A lot of people don't know the details of that. It's fascinating uh, what was going on in her life. She didn't commit suicide. She, you know, she was murdered. The first cop on the scene who we interviewed said, as soon as he walked in the door, he said, staged murder. You know, like the cops on the scene, that's who we talk to. Forensics, uh, guys that were told to lie about Marilyn's death, guys that were told to lie about, uh, you know, you know, Thane Caesar, right? I mean, Bobby Kennedy had powder burns on his hair. Sir Han was 10 feet away with Rosie Greer and George Plimpton grabbing his arm. He had an eight shot pistol. There were 14 bullets in that pantry, as you know. And none of, you know, the bullet in Bobby wasn't the same as Sir Han. And uh, Sir Han, I don't know if you know this out, but Sir Han, was a hypnotic subject, which you know, but someone found in hypnosis and in the CIA, they call it the key. You can, you can get a hypnotic subject to reveal what happened to them. Usually they're programmed to forget. You know, they commit a crime and then they're touched or whatever and they forget. But they, there's a tape of a guy breaking down Sirhan, and it's absolutely chilling. And, um, but this book is just, you know, like Dr. King... Uh, was clear, you know, James Earl Wright never fired a shot. He, 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 the only reason he pleaded guilty was so they wouldn't fry him. 
Dr. King's family believes him that he wasn't guilty. Uh, as you know, that famous photo where they're pointing at the shooter, uh, James Earl Ray was at the same level as the balcony. So it wasn't a straight shot. It was, you know, a downward angle. But Once now it, with JFK, he was photographed at the scene. I've talked to his son. Who? Uh, 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 well, I mean, now I'm shifting gears to what happened in, 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 a, in a Dealey Plaza. I mean, I'm jumping around here, but it's all in the book. But I mean, I mean, I've interviewed E. Howard Hunt's son, who yes. premiered video and audio here and on Coast to Coast AM, where he was admitting to it. In fact, he sued a newspaper when they said he was involved, and he lost back yes. in the 80s. I, yes. I mean, this is incredible. We even have the people that were famous black op killers admitting that they were there running the hit of JFK. Yeah, yeah that's true. And, you know, um, he had an ear surgery hunt. Yeah. His ears was stood out so much. He may have been one of the tramps or he was definitely there. And then what happened, Alex, was he was on his deathbed. He thought he was dying. And he wrote this chart that you saw when you interviewed the son in breaking down the hierarchy and the the cabal that murdered Kennedy, and then he rallied and didn't die. That's when he started suing because he told the truth to his son. Then he didn't die, so he had to cover that up. The trial you're talking about was with um, who was that guy that wrote the first the first book about the murder? Uh, God damn it. Um, Anyway, oh, there have been so many. I mean, that's the problem is that we're we're literally in a sea of evidence. I mean, I interrupted you when you were on the oh, um, oh, the, oh it's cool. The uh, the killing of Martin Luther King. I yeah. mean, it's all so incredibly transparent. Yeah, and you know, we know I now, I now can state unequivocally that it was physically impossible for Oswald to have fired a weapon that day. He was having lunch on the first floor. He was seen by a pregnant woman eight minutes or seven minutes before the murder. She remembers it because she had to go to the bathroom every 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, two black gentlemen who worked at the depository said they saw him. And Lee, when he was Lee Harvey Oswald, when he was the very few notes on, that we have of his interview, he mentioned that, oh, yeah, Junior. No, he named the two black guys. He couldn't. So the odds of him guessing who was there. Then he goes to the second floor and, you know, as we know, got a Coke. And see, Officer Bar Marion Barry, uh, Marion Barry, Officer, um, the, the motorcycle patrolman who ran up the stairs with Roy Truly, the manager of the building, he's a combat guy. He was on his cycle, a motorcycle. He heard a shot. He knew it came from above. He got off his bike. He ran into the depository so fast that he bumped into Roy Truly, who was running up the stairs, and Truly brought him up ran up the stairs, saw Oswald through these doors on the second floor, calmly drinking a Coke. Now, Alex, they say that Oswald fired three shots with a Manlicker Carcano rifle, which is a joke rifle, with a misaligned scope in six seconds. As you know, and Jesse proved this, when you sight a bolt-action rifle, you have to drop it to pull the bolt and then recite. There was a tree in the way of the limousine. No shooter ever shoots anybody going away. The first shot missed. That was the one. But like you said, they write all these 8,000-page debunker yeah. books. They could have 20 chimpanzees in a room typing. Yeah. It's all, I mean, hundreds of witnesses, hundreds saw the smoke and shooting and guys with rifles and then so hundreds of deaths and people being killed and, 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 and his head blowing up and the photos and the brain disappearing and... I interviewed the head of the funeral home when the feds came in to put the ink oh, on Oswald's hand and yes. put it on there. And then and then he was coming back to do another interview and guys ran him off the road at 90 something years old. And well, he couldn't do the interview. Yeah, I know that story. And, you know, um, they found fingerprints on those boxes at in the so-called sniper's nest. None of them are Oswald's. And Alex, this is going to blow your mind if you don't know it already. Guess there's a. a, a in the 70s, a, a very diligent reporter was thumbing through Dallas police files, found fingerprints. Mac Wallace, Lyndon Johnson's hitman, who we know and proven in court through testimony, it, it was a murderer. His fingerprints were on, on the box in the sixth floor. I don't know what that means, but I don't think Johnson ordered it. I think he was told, but that's, we'll talk about that when we have more time. The details of that but you know mac wallace's 
prints are on the box. Uh, I think that was staged. They, you know, they said Oswald never fired a shot. So let me just quickly say this, Alex. I was in Dallas. I went to the museum. Uh, they allowed me to, uh, go, you know, see the stairs, and they don't let you go up to that window, but I was close enough to see. Um, and here's what's so bizarre: you know, this guy Posner wrote the book Case Closed uh, with the, with his false scholarship, uh, who ran away from me. By the way, you'd love this. I was doing the Today Show. Actually, Jesse Ventura was on the same day, Alex, 1999. My book came out. It was called UFOs, JFK, and all this conspiracies. You don't have to be crazy to believe. I'll send it to you if you don't have it. And by coincidence, now that I think of it, Jesse was on that show and Posner was on, but we're all separate segments. And I couldn't wait to get my hands on Posner for lying and, and you know, just forget about what, it's criminal what he's done. But he ran out. They, they said, oh, he ran out of here. He heard you were here. <laughs> And then Jesse goes on with Matt Lauer and says, I agree with Richard Dozer about this, you know. So that was like 99. Anyway, I'm rambling, but, uh, oh, so let me just go through this because this is key. Um, I, I read a lot of the Warren Commission report, and they reenacted the, so, you know, what happened. And they had the officer uh, Barry, uh, Officer Marion, excuse me, his last name, Patrolman Marion reenact it, but they 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 slowed him down, Alex. They made him do it slower than he actually did it. So keep this in mind. Then they had an FBI guy play Oswald, and they say that Oswald fired the shots, ran in a straight line across the sixth floor, and wedged the rifle behind a stack of books. Okay, right there. It wasn't a straight line because there were books that he would have had to zigzag. We're talking about seconds that it would take. And then he supposedly jams the rifle behind the stack of books, then goes down four flights. It's really eight short flights with landings. You know how some staircases have landings? Sure. So eight short flights. The door to those stairs is really heavy. So, I mean, I'm not the strongest guy in the world, but any person would take a few seconds to open the door, even, you know, Arnold Schwartz and asshole, whatever. So open the door uh, and then go down the four flights or eight, go to the Coke machine, open it, and start sipping it. They said he did that all in 90 or 95 seconds. Now, according to the reenactment, but in reality, it would have to have been 60 seconds, 58 to 65 seconds. Therefore, physically impossible, even if he did fire a shot from that window, which he didn't, it would be physically impossible for him to have gotten down the stairs, not be out of breath, open a Coke, open that heavy door, jam the rifle behind there, dodge all these stacks of books. I mean, what pisses me off, Alex, pardon my French, the utter contempt that the elites have for us. For Richard people. Belzer, this has been one of the most amazing interviews ever, not just your info, but Christopher Walken popping in. Promise me you'll come on next Monday or Tuesday for an hour and a half. We're going to set it up right now. Thank you so much. The book is dead wrong. We've just scratched the surface. Next time he joins us, I would have read the whole book. We're going to see you next Monday or Tuesday, okay? All right. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate no, it. No, no, you're awesome. Stay there. I want to talk to you here in just a moment. Stay safe. Oh, I'll try, brother, you too, and say hi to Christopher Walken again for me and the rest of your crew there. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Mm -hmm.